Okay, this is history.com, history stories. One man exposes the secrets of the Freemasons. His disappearance led to their downfall. L'objectif, c'est véritablement qu'on maintienne ce chiffre et qu'on continue. <coughs> September the 12th, 1826, a Batavia, New York stone worker named William Morgan went missing from the local jail. The first Masonic lodges began showing up in the colonies in the early 18th century and swiftly gained power and influence. Members of the Freemasons eventually played a pivotal role in the formation of the United States. 13 of the 39 signatures on the US Constitution belonged to Masons. <coughs> <coughs> Law enforcement officers loyal to the Freemasons arrested and jailed Morgan and Miller for outstanding debts. Miller's offices became a target as well. On September the 8th, a posse of drunken Masons tried to destroy his print shop and it was damaged by a small fire two days later. On September the 11th, that's 9-11, <coughs> <coughs> A gang of Masons showed up at Morgan's house with an arrest warrant for petty larceny. It seemed he had borrowed a shirt and tie from the owner of a local tavern and never returned it. Soon after he arrived at the police station, the charges were dropped, but Morgan was immediately arrested for another petty debt of $2.65. Late in the evening, he was bailed out by a group of Masons led by Lotton Lawson, the mastermind of the kidnapping according to Light on Masonry, a 19th century compilation of documents about Freemasonry. He was escorted hurriedly into a carriage and taken away, never to be seen again. The last word anyone heard Morgan utter was, allegedly, murder. Shortly after Morgan's disappearance, Miller published illustrations of Masonry with a scathing introduction that was written in the absence of the author who was kidnapped and carried away from the village of Batavia on the 11th day of September, 1826. That's 9-11. <coughs> By a number of Freemasons. Psalm 1, English Standard Version Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, 
and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Thank you.